How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be diagnosing and rectifying a intermittent running rough problem that's presented on a Holden Commodore VZ. It usually happens when hot and in this video I'm going to show you what that fault was. <laughs> When the vehicle showed up in the workshop, I did have the luxury of having the fault present. It is an intermittent fault, but when it came to the workshop, the vehicle was hot. It was driven for a certain period of time. The warning lights were on in the dash and the engine was running noticeably rough at idle. So the first thing we're always going to do in that case is we're going to do the diagnostic scan and assess to see what fault codes are stored. There is two fault codes stored on the ECU, but I'm solely going to focus in on one of those codes for this fault cylinder 2 injector circuit problem now while I am working on a VZ Commodore today all of the information that I'm sharing is transferable onto another vehicle if you have a similar issue that you're trying to get on top of so back to that fault code that particular fault code does have a few possibilities which can cause it we have the engine control module or the power control module as it's also called we have the wiring and of course we have the injector itself any of those items can cause that problem to flag that code now how you approach the next steps may be different than what i do but as i always say when i'm teaching apprentices or if i'm sharing information with other technicians find your own flow there is more than one way to find and fix faults on cars and that goes for mechanical problems as well as long as you get to the result with a successful diagnosis then it's all good to me and the customer will always be happy at this point if i had access to the injectors with the possibility of removing the injector connector i would do that first and foremost before i'd carry out any other test i could simply remove the connector get a noid light or a test light and check to see if we're getting a signal also with the connector removed i could check the resistance at the injector itself and see if it's within spec we don't have that option because the intake's in the way but if we did that would show us if we were getting a signal from the injector driver and again if the injector was within spec on that resistance so that's what you would do if you had access to the rail and accessibility to the injectors at this point you can also use your scope if you had one you're familiar with using it and to check injector number two at either the fuse box using a fusible link or direct at the wire and in this case the wire that we'll be looking for knowing the wiring diagram it's a green and black and color wire so that is the one and you can pin that up higher towards the um, harness or directly down at the um, PCM itself but for me my next move is checking the wiring for the from the um, ECM to the accessible harness connector which is near the bulkhead they're two very easy items to remove so I choose to to just go ahead get my multimeter get my leads and start to do tests there i check the continuity and the resistance of the wires going from the pcm up to that connector harness again i always do like to take a comparison reading from a known good injector and that's what i do here now after confirming that all is good with those, I reconnect the connectors and um, those plugs, I reconnect them back in and then I switch the ignition on and I check to see if we have battery voltage at both injector points. With the ignition on, I then back probe two injectors as I want to use a comparison injector like I was saying and I want to check with my multimeter what is the voltage with the ignition on at those injectors. We can see that the battery voltage is present on both of those tests, so we move on to the next one. So the next test we do is repeating the voltage check, and again we're looking for that battery voltage, except the engine is going to be running this time. So with the engine running we're looking to see if there's any voltage differences especially of course on that number two injector as you can see number two injector is now showing a low voltage when you compare that to the known good 
and what we know we should see at this point, which is battery voltage, we have identified clearly that there is a fault in this circuit. With that result, it has confirmed for me that I need to remove that inlet and get down and access number two injector. Then very quick and simple checks have um, made it very clear for me. I need to get in, get in deeper, remove that intake and start to see what's actually happening down at the injector itself. So with those parts now removed, we have clear visibility and I can check the injector and see the resistance of that. Now the spec reading and um, that you should be getting, the manufacturer's spec reading on, on the resistance of the injector is between 11.4 to 13.4 approximately. And as you can see here, number two is now a confirmed failure. The resistance is completely out of spec of what we should be seeing. At this point, I do end up checking all of the other injectors to see if they all are within spec. They are, they show up that they're within the tolerances that we should be expecting to see, but I do give the customer the option if they wanted to, to replace the injectors as a set. They are all the same age and they aren't that expensive, but the customer did decide just to get the one done for now. A couple of tips when doing injectors like this, I recommend taping up the inlet ports. That's to avoid avoid any risk of anything falling down there and causing any issues use a good tape cover them completely up and it's much safer to do the job the second is to blow around the injectors before you would remove them so get an airline and blow around at the butt points where the seals are and before you remove the injector or can take the rails out completely you will have all the dirt and debris that could fall into them holes removed so you, it's much safer and easier to work on the vehicle it's much better again when you're putting the injectors back in place that the seals will have a nice clean area to push down on so with the new injector arrived i do a very quick check and see that the resistance of that new injector is within spec before I install. Always a good idea to check new parts, compare them that they're the exact same visibility wise, same uh, pin positions, and also a resistance check is always a good idea on these injectors or any injectors before you install. Now, as this isn't a step-by-step -step mechanical repair guide, I am sharing all the information that you need should you want to diagnose an injector circuit failure like this or on a similar vehicle to this when you have this type of fault. So with everything um, installed, the new injector in place and all the parts back together again, we just repeat the same tests we did before uh, we confirm the fault. So we wanna see if the battery voltage has returned on that uh, injector two circuit so that we repeat that test with the multimeter. And as you can see here, we are now getting the correct voltage with the engine running. The circuit has returned to normal and we have that battery voltage present. The also noticeable thing that we have straight away is a non-erratic idle so it's running nice and smooth and it's running on all six as soon as the vehicle has started. So as always with every vehicle that we work on we then clear the codes make sure that nothing is returning and we bring the vehicle for an extended road test. We want to make sure that everything is okay and that there's no faults present. The vehicle is starting idling right and driving on all six cylinders again. After confirming that that there is no more issues I give the customer a call and this job is now complete and ready to go home. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.